then I feel like look at this option because it's really simple. It's not toxic. You know, we don't have to worry about him shedding chemo drugs or anything like that. It's not hurting the rest of his body. It's just been a really gentle thing for our family to be able to do. And I'm so thrilled that it has been effective for Max. And I hope that it becomes the the treatment for the future that that works for most. Max is our third shelter pit bull. And our first one was an absolute delight, just amazing. And he at age eight was diagnosed with prostate cancer and then later bladder cancer, transitional cell carcinoma. We lost him. You know, we tried everything that we could find at the time that was available to us and put him through a lot more than we should have and lost him six months after his diagnosis. And so Max is so much like him that when people who knew him meet him, they think they call him Bogey was our first, our first shelter pit bull. And they call him Bogey because he's just so much like him. There was just something that made me a little paranoid because Max was having these recurrent urinary tract infections that's pretty unusual in a male dog. And I had listened to an oncologist podcast, a veterinary oncologist, and she had said, you know, if she could have the family practice vets do anything, it would be to do the cadet BRAF test for dogs who had recurrent urinary tract infections. And so I asked my vet about doing the test and he's used to my, my anxious parenting. <laughs> and um, and he hadn't done it before, but he ordered the test and he did it. And very much to his surprise, and maybe not quite as much to mine, but to my devastation, it came back positive for Max. So from the, from the research for the cadet BRAF test, they did not find any false positives for transitional cell carcinoma. They sometimes were able to see it in dogs up to four months before it was visible on ultrasound. So we did an ultrasound the next day after we got the results back and there was no visible cancer in the bladder or the prostate. And I started to look into clinical trials because when I started to look into the treatment for transitional cell carcinoma, I was very sad to find that very little had changed in the 13 years since our previous dog had died. I shouldn't say nothing had changed, but the, the prognosis wasn't much better. The treatments were very similar. And so as I was looking into clinical trials, I came across an article about the use of immunocidin in just a very, very small group of dogs in Brazil who had been diagnosed with transitional cell carcinoma and many of whom had gone through other treatments, but this had not been effective at arresting the progression or causing remission in the cancer. I ended up talking to the company Novaviv that makes immunocidin, and they had offered that Max could do IV immunocidin and oral immunocidin, which is what they were mostly doing in their clinical trials at the time. And I asked them about the protocol from Brazil, which was the immunocidin was actually infused into the bladder. They were wonderful. And they said, if your vet is willing to do it, we will provide the immunocidin. And my vet was willing to do it. So Max was got the positive cadet BRAF test in October of 2020. It was November when we started the immunocidin infusions. And at first they were every two weeks, then they spaced out to a month or every four weeks. We repeated cadet breath tests maybe four times, I think, over the next several months. And everyone that we got after we began treatment came back negative. So we're now, <laughs> I know, I know it makes me tear up to think about, you know, especially we just had these visions in our head of what had happened to our previous dog. And we thought this was going to be Max's story too. And we also were very determined not to have him suffer the way our first dog did. Like I was so set on finding a cure. It was, you know, I was really young. It really changed my worldview because it was the first time in my life that I had worked as hard as I possibly could and done everything I possibly could. And it still wasn't enough. And in fact, it was too much. We really, he was suffering his last few months and we should not have let that happen. But I was just so sure that we would be able to cure him and that this was temporary. And so going into the treatment with Max, I was very clear that like, I do not, 
I will not let him suffer in hope for a cure or more time. And he has not had any negative side effects from the immunocidin at all. I mean, absolutely nothing. He doesn't have to be sedated. I mean, he's a very easygoing guy, but he goes in and gets his treatments. They give him a pillow and he lies on the exam table. They catheterize him empty his bladder, and then they infuse a diluted mixture of the, the immunocidin into his bladder, and it doesn't take long. And then he comes back to me, and he's supposed to kind of change positions um, to make sure that it gets all over his bladder. He hasn't had any negative side effects from it. And we are now, you know, over three years out from diagnosis, and he shows no sign of bladder cancer. He's now 12 and a half years old, and we're facing some arthritis and things like that. But he's also been a very cancer prone dog before the transitional cell carcinoma. He had been diagnosed with mast cell tumors. He had just been diagnosed with a nerve sheath tumor, which is a soft tissue sarcoma. And we just had a lump removed a few months ago. And to our great surprise or a few weeks ago to our great surprise it was not cancer it was a fibroma so in addition to not having any progression or any sign of the transitional cell carcinoma he also hasn't had any new cancer diagnoses you know obviously we can't know for sure that has been preventative for him or that he couldn't still be harboring some cancerous cells somewhere but he's doing really well he's sleeping on the bed behind me here he is <laughs> <laughs> he gets oral. So once a week, he takes the immunocide. Technically, he's done with his protocol. And he was done a long time ago. But because it worked so well, I have opted to continue it since it doesn't seem to bother him. You know, he goes and he gets a whole bag of treats every time he goes for a treatment. He loves the vet tech who does his treatment. So I have opted to continue it. Technically, he would be done with the protocol. He doesn't like the taste of the oral, but it's, you know, no needle, just a syringe. I put it in his mouth and he kind of, but it's not a big deal. I feel like we were really lucky to find Max's cancer so early. So I'd be very curious to see how it works for dogs with more advanced cancer. But I feel like it's such a beautiful option to me because there's been no suffering for him.